Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Louise, I am the Make on the Move, and today I am a very rainy Brussels doing another shopping video for you guys. I got the train to London, I then boarded the Eurostar and did the two hour journey all the way from London St Pancras to Brussels. Okay, so that was super painless. Uh, it was busy on the train, so I couldn't talk to you then. You basically you get off, and it's basically like getting off any other train you've ever got off, which is a normal station. And obviously, because I went through customs at the other end, I just get straight off the train and head straight into the city. First time in over a year, I had a little bit of a, an anxiety attack when I got on. No idea why, I think I'm just tired. So rather than going exploring like I normally would, I'm going to head to my hotel, show you what it looks like, and then tomorrow we can get started properly. I just need to take some time to uh, watch some TV and just, just chill for a bit. I'm absolutely fine, but these things happen sometimes, that's the joys of mental health. I wanted to grab my bags and jump off the train and not come, and I very, very nearly did, but I just talked myself through it, knew that I'd enjoy it once I was here, and yeah, I made it, I'm proud of myself. So it's proof that you can do whatever you set your mind to. You can achieve anything. Okay, time to walk to the hotel. 23 minutes, let's go. Okay, so I'm here. I'm gonna give you a tour of my room and I am very impressed. So I actually got an apartment. I didn't know how expensive it was gonna to be to eat here. So I thought I could get like a mini suite rather than a hotel room. And it actually worked out to be the same price to get this without breakfast as it would be if I got another hotel that included breakfast. So I'll show you what I mean, but yeah, it's, um, it's very fancy. So you come in the front door and then in this little room is the toilet all on its own. Very random. Um, you have a big cupboard here, so if you were using it as an apartment, staying here for a long period of time, that would be ideal. Then I have a little kitchen. So this is dishwasher, fridge, sink, hob, and it also has um, all the cutlery and crockery and stuff that you would need. So if you were staying here for a long period of time, you're staying here with a family or a baby, this would be a godsend. So through to the main part of the room, a mirror of course then we've got a desk here if you wanted to work as well as two beds which obviously could be a double but for me I'm just having one um, I've got a little table here that I can also work on with a very very comfy chair um, sliding wardrobes with a safe an ironing board and things like that and then through here is the rest of the bathroom a bit random if you go to the toilet you have to walk all the way around here to wash your hands don't know the bit you all ask me for every time I go so anywhere the view out the window. Let me flip you around. Well, it's a lot of roof, I'm not gonna lie, but you can see some beautiful buildings there as well. And the best views are actually on the other side of the building, but never mind. So that is it for me for tonight. I am very tired and I need to take some time for me. So I'm gonna watch some TV and then I will see you in the morning. Good morning. So I had a nice lazy evening last night. Now we're about to head out do some fabric shopping and some sightseeing. So I'm here today and then I have tomorrow as well, but tomorrow in the afternoon, I'm doing a Belgian chocolate making workshop, which I'm very excited about. Today, let's go find some fabric shops, see what sites we can see, and then there'll be another adventure tomorrow. Let's go. Okay, so the first place we're going is, I think, predominantly a yarn shop. We'll go into this one, it looks very cute, and we'll see what we can find. So this little shop was very cute. I always try and find small independents when I'm traveling and this one didn't disappoint. If you need yarn, this is the place to come. They had these anti-tangle balls, which I first saw in the US a couple of months ago. But if you have experience with them, let me know what they're like in the comments because I've never actually used one. They had loads of different colors, loads of different brands and loads of the accessories that you would need to do your knitting and crochet project as well. I really like this variegated yarn. I just thought the colours were absolutely beautiful, as well as this one, which normally wouldn't be my thing, but I really loved the ombre effect. I think it looked absolutely great. And they also had some really reasonably priced alpaca yarn as well. Over this side of the shop, it was interestingly mostly DMC brand. Now in the UK, DMC brand is actually Serdar. So this one here is Serdar Spirit over here in the UK. And this one here is actually the Jewel Spun Aran Weight. So it was very interesting to see the same products rebranded for a different market. But Serdar is a UK heritage brand, so I guess that makes sense. Merci. That was very cute in there. Lots of yarn. The label thing is very interesting. I don't blame them. It's very similar to one I actually went to in Berlin. So if you saw that video, there was a one, I think it was called Knit Knit or something like that. Um, and it was very similar to that, nice little independent one. Let's see uh, 
where we can get to next. But I am getting hungry, so might be time for a waffle. absolutely lost their minds so I don't know who it was but they were in like a blacked out car there was police escorts and all sorts of things I have a house like that one day <laughs> It's just started raining so I'm not sure I'm gonna get all the shops today this might be over the next couple of days but um I need to go and find somewhere for lunch because I don't particularly want to get rained on so when you go into most of the chocolatier shops they give you a sample when you walk in the door so uh, free chocolate, I might just end up going in and out of all of them for the rest of the day. <laughs> Judging the rain, getting free chocolate. But now I'm heading to the grand place. So this is meant to be amazing. They said it was amazing. They weren't wrong. Look at this. Look at these buildings, there's gold everywhere. Not normally my vibe, but look. Absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. I think there's a museum, there's some shops. It's so beautiful here. I imagine coming here on a sunny day, it is absolutely rammed. I'm glad that I came outside of normal season, but obviously the rain isn't ideal. Okay, so the next one we're going to, I think, lots of accessories and things. Also, yes, this is what my hair looks like now. <laughs> it got rained on. So, um, I am a frizzball. <laughs> Gold finger. <laughs> This shop didn't have a massive amount of fabric and it was very very crammed in so it was hard to see really but I really like this Christmas green one here and they also had this huge wall of more like dressmaking fabrics and um, it was all pretty cheap fabric if I'm honest so if that's what you were looking for this is the place to go but they did have this entire aisle of buttons I was absolutely in my element and somehow I managed not to buy any it, the shop was absolutely rammed and they had more jerseys and stretch fabrics at the back. They had all of the ribbons you could possibly imagine, a very clever way of displaying their zips. So each of these zip groups are on a metal ring and each one is a specific size. So you can just go to the size that you want and pick the colour. It was very, very clever. They also had all of loads of other trims and loads of these really cute tassels and bells. Now, I have absolutely no reason to buy any tassels to go on anything but that didn't stop me <laughs> i got a nice little selection uh, before i went to check out the little yarn section that they also had and prices are pretty comparable to here in the uk they're just smaller balls they also had tons of accessories and every sewing machine needle you could possibly need it was a proper little aladdin's cave well that place was amazing um obviously very little fabric and things like that but if you ever need a trim or an accessory that is the place to go they had everything and they had every variation of everything as well absolutely brilliant now did i just buy 20 tassels for absolutely no reason yes yes i did do i know what project they're for no i don't and were the 18 euros well that's none of your business <laughs> I very rarely just buy things because I see them. Very rarely, like almost never, unless you watch my Florida series, in which case you know that's an absolute lie. But things like this, I very rarely buy without a project. I couldn't say no. 20 for 18 euros as well. I mean, it's still, it's still a lot of money spent on tassels, but um, no regrets. I'm also excited because I just did that whole transaction in French. I said, hi, the things I needed, the amount I needed and that was him card and and said thank you and goodbye and the man didn't even realize i was a french well he probably did but he didn't speak to me in english so um yeah pretty chuffed with that <laughs> just quick how cool are these shops they are freight containers just stacked on top of each other and made into buildings so cool so the last shop of the day was actually a bead shop. So there was this huge table down the middle that displayed loads and loads of different beads. They had every size, every color, every variation, and you could just browse them as much as you wanted. It was so cool to see so many different types of bead, as well as underneath, they had these drawers, which 
had even more beads in and then on the front of each drawer it showed you which ones were inside it was so clever if i could have a button shop like this that would be the absolute dream they also had tons and tons of ribbons which were really cool i don't know how they reached them from the top they had some buttons as well and then they had this section which is all the chains and things they also had wooden blocks and doorknobs for some completely random reason, but they were all very cute as well as cord to make your jewellery out of. I had absolutely no business buying any beads from here, but that didn't stop me. I got one of these ones with the tree on and I also got this silver tree design as well. I got a little plane, obviously I travel loads and some of these arrows as well. Also, I can't say no to a disco ball, so I got some of these little round ones too. It was all very clever and it was a lovely little shop. So, yep, I absolutely loved it. That was super cool. So it was a bead shop, which I was expecting, and it had all of the beads out and you wrote down on a wooden board how many of which ones you had. And then they just had them all up at the end and you put them in the bag yourself. So really easy for them. Um, very trusting. I loved with the drawers and all the bits on the top as well. Obviously, as a button fanatic, I um, very much appreciated that shop and bought lots of things again that I didn't need to buy. So that's the theme of today. Emma, if you're watching this, you'd be proud of me. Chose to walk up a massive hill. If you were here in the summer, you would see that when Emma was with me on my road trip, everywhere we went, she found a hill and I did a lot of complaining about it. I swear to God, every time she takes me anywhere, it's not the biggest bloody hill. Happened yesterday, happened in Nice. I guess I'm not inviting her. So, I'm being a big girl, I'm doing it myself. Who am I? I've been to lots of different shops, they're very spread out around the city, and I've done lots and lots of steps. Uh, I'm going to head back and then head out and get some food later, and then tomorrow I'll take you for a different kind of making, because we're making chocolate. So it's the next day, I had a lazy morning doing some work, and now I am back in this square, so the grand place that I came to yesterday when it was raining and just looked a bit miserable, but I am back, and look how amazing the buildings look. Look at all the gold, I just... I thought it looked good yesterday, but it definitely looks better when the sun is shining. Very, very exciting. So I've got about an hour to kill until it's time to go and make some chocolate. So I've got myself a tea, uh, mint and citrus, if anybody cares. And I am about to head to the last place that I haven't visited yet, but I want to. Um, and it's meant to be beautiful. Okay, let's do some abs The chocolates I just showed you was 65 euros for five boxes, and there was nine in each box. So if I can count, it's 45 chocolates for 65 euros. Right, well, actually, I'll just go, go to the shop. <laughs> okay, so it's time to go to the chocolate making thing. There's a museum, there's a tour, there's a demonstration, and then I get to make my own. Let's go. So the whole experience was 35 euros and they took us behind the scenes into one of their test kitchens. They gave us tips on how to use the tempered chocolate to pipe our designs and let us get really creative. Obviously I did a cat and it was very very interesting to learn the best ways to use the chocolate and the logic behind it. Mario the chocolatier made it so much fun. Each person had their own setup with their chocolate moulds, some paper to work on and then a tray in the middle of lots of extras that we could add to make our chocolate even more yummy. I went for quantity rather than quality because I wanted to get my money's worth so everybody else was doing very intricate designs and I was making Mickey Mouse's and little chocolate dollops. <laughs> I was so impressed with how it came out and I think my cat is pretty good if I do say so myself. Obviously we got to bring the chocolate home too so I was very excited. Entry to the museum was included in your workshop fee and it was really cool to walk around and see how chocolate is produced and thankfully there weren't too many scary mannequins. They had loads of chocolate designs so these were all made out of solid chocolate and it's absolutely amazing what they could do. Some people are just so clever. Also, there were some free samples, so I made sure that I enjoyed myself while I was there. And I might have put a few in my pocket. I just watched Mario, who did my workshop earlier, make this chocolate pani, and it's so good. But I asked him, because I knew a lot of you would want to know, should you keep your chocolate in the fridge? And he said no, because it's really bad for chocolate, because fridges are made 
to have moisture in them and the moisture gets into the chocolate. I'm not getting involved. If you want to keep your chocolate in the fridge, then you can, but um, I'm not doing it. Chocolate yeah, man said. I think it'll last long enough to go in the fridge. Who am I kidding? <laughs> So we've got two things to do before we leave Brussels today. One of them is actually the reason that I'm here in the first place. And the second one is something that you can't come to Belgium without doing. So when we were kids, my dad had an atlas and we used to open up the atlas and flick through it. Child of the nineties, there wasn't that much technology. But we used to look up our names in the index and see if we could find anywhere that was named after us, because that's how it works. Most places were Louisa or um, Luis, but I remember there being two that were actually Louise. One, Lake Louise in Canada, which I have actually already been to, which is very exciting. And the second one was Louise in Brussels. Now, I'm here now, and my inner five-year-old is having a lovely time. I made it. <laughs> oh, simple things, eh? So unfortunately, it turned out wasn't named after me. It's actually King Leopold II's daughter was Princess Louise. So it's named after her, but I think, I think it was actually me. So thank you, Brussels. It's basically just a district. There's nothing that interesting here. There's a couple of fancy hotels. You've got me own car park, but I just wanted to be Louise in Louise. <laughs> oh. Sometimes you've just got to please your inner child. And I feel like I spend a lot of my time at the moment doing that. But it's the simple things in life. This cost me no money, obviously, other than coming to Brussels. I'm a very happy lady today. So if there's something silly that you've been wanting to do since you were a child, just go and do it. Obviously, as long as it's legal, it doesn't hurt anyone else. Do it, why not? Life is way too short not to. Brussels look, I know you're obsessed with me, but this is getting a bit much now. So that's one bucket list thing ticked off the list. We've got one more thing to do, and I'm very excited. I can't actually believe it's taken me three days to do this. had to be done so good it's so doughy oh all the way so apparently the traditional way to have a waffle is to just have it completely plain and um, it's only tourists who um started getting stuff put on top so um i just went completely plain and it's so good there's no haul for you guys this week because all i bought were the tassels that you saw and the selection of beads from the bead shop no fabric at all because to be honest i couldn't really find any Unless I've missed something really, really obvious, there isn't that much to be bought in Brussels, which is a little bit disappointing. And if you did live here, I don't know where you'd buy yours. Keep mine, I guess. So that is it for Brussels. I'm not gonna lie, it hasn't necessarily been my favorite place I've ever visited. Still had a really good time. Fabric shopping is pretty hit and miss. It's definitely not the place to come if you want to do some fabric shopping, but if you want any accessories, you'd have a great time. I did have an amazing time at the chocolate making thing yesterday and at the museum and just looking around the city, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm not gonna be rushing back, but I still had an amazing time. And it turns out waffles, chips and chocolate, delicious everywhere in the world. <laughs> I'll see you next week for another video. Have a good day, guys.